Today we're going to talk about an excellent tool called Hiren's Boot CD, which runs the pre-installation version of Windows. This tool is going to be linked down below in the description. This isn't a paid promotion, but we do use this tool quite a bit. When a user's machine is having trouble, and let's say the machine does not have BitLocker on it, and we want to do some hardware or data recovery from the hard drive, this USB drive has a ton of tools on it. So you can start using these tools here to store some data. You can also try to repair booting if you have an issue with the boot of the machine. You can defrag the system, which is, I guess, an older concept here that I don't necessarily recommend. Off of that, you can run diagnostics on the hard drives to see if there's something wrong with them. You can then also utilize these tools to, let's say, connect an external USB or some other network location and then copy a full image from the machine and send it somewhere else or put on another USB, kind of a backup. You can also even partition different parts of your disks in Windows and you can format the whole machine, which is very nice. You can use this Lay Soft Windows Recovery Tool, as well as some of the big parts here would be scanning for antivirus while Windows is not loaded. Because this CD or USB runs when you're out of Windows. You have to reboot your computer to use it. And we'll show you how in this video, but you can utilize all these other tools here. You can easily view the contents of the system if it's not encrypted. So that's a big one. And because of that, you can, if the system isn't encrypted, you can run full antivirus scans using these tools. You can also see what kind of keys are installed on the machine using these tools. And then another amazing part here would be to reset your password if you forgot it, which would be another reason that you most likely do want to have disk encryption on your machine. And we'll make another video showing you how to activate something called BitLocker on your Windows machine. And then there's other information that you can gain and tools that you can run on your system to get details like how well the machine is running and changing settings, anything from the registry to using the sys internal suite and even PowerShell and network access. The one thing to note is that this tool is pretty nice in that when it boots up, it can actually try to connect to Wi-Fi and or Ethernet so that you can actually surf the internet. In a way, you could even use this as a quick version of limited windows to actually get any junk or old PC working. You can actually just boot to the USB or CD and then boom, you're in Windows. So we'll proceed with showing you what to do. On this page, the first page of the Hirens Boot CD is just an intro, it shows you how the tool works. We're gonna go to the download section. So this is the list of the tools and at the bottom, you'll have the ISO. This tool is actually started many years ago, but the community has taken over the project and they've updated it. So it does change here and there. They sometimes add and remove tools they see fit. So in here, we're going to go ahead and download this to our downloads. So after that downloads, we're going to then go back up to the top. We're going to click on USB booting because we're going to show you how to use the USB booting feature. When you're actually using a computer that is working to create the DVD or USB, you need to pop in a blank DVD and then double click the file and run it. But what's gonna happen then is if your machine has DVD burning software, it's gonna then go ahead and say, do you wanna write this to the DVD? Then you could burn it to this DVD. But what I prefer is this ISO to USB.exe. So up top, you click on the USB booting, you go down to that little link, click it. We're gonna go ahead and save it. So right now here, we just went ahead and took those two files, put them in a folder here just so it's clean. This one, you can tell the ISO is pretty large and the exe here that creates a USB is pretty tiny, but it's right there. So we'll start off by double clicking that program. And we'll show it to you right here. You'll see then the system is saying, I don't have a USB connected to my computer. Here you wanna get a USB drive that's at least about four gig. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the USB. Okay, so now I have this device connected. It sees it, it's enormous for this purpose, but it'll do the trick. 
you just go ahead and leave everything the way that it's done. If you don't see your device, you just press this button to rescan and then check the list and you'll see it. And then you just go ahead and hit process. Once you hit process, it'll go ahead and write the data to the USB drive. And then it'll go ahead and tell you that it's complete. So we'll go ahead and close this. And then you can go ahead and disconnect this USB from your actual working computer that you created this on. Now for a little disclaimer, I want to make sure that you understand that these tools and everything that we're showing you can cause a lot of damage to your computer. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it, or if it's one of those things where you might start going down the pathway of thinking that you're fixing something and then you break it further, I want to make sure that all your data is backed up and that you understand that maybe it would be best to ask a professional for some help or assistance. And if there's anything that we can help you with, let us know in the comments below and we can definitely try to help you out. But I wanna make sure that you know that if you're already having trouble with your machine and you're trying to run this tool and it doesn't fix it, obviously it's very possible that it, this tool can't fix everything. And on top of that, if you use the tools incorrectly, you could cause a lot of damage or even further issue to the machine. Now you're gonna take the USB and plug it into the computer that's having the problem. If it's running Windows 10 and Windows 11, you wanna go ahead and shut the computer off after you plug it in, and or if you just pop the DVD into the tray, and if you burned a DVD, you would pop it into the tray, close the tray, and you'd be good to go. In this case, we're using a virtual machine. So we've already told the virtual machine to use a DVD, so if you see here, the ISO that we downloaded, we can just feed that to this. And then what we have to do with this virtual machine is we actually have to tell it to use the DVD drive first. So we're just gonna put that all the way to the top inside of firmware boot from DVD drive. But in your case, you'll have to go into the machine's BIOS. And that means depending on the manufacturer, you might have to press F1, F2, F12, or enter when the computer turns on and you have to catch it before it gets into Windows and then you need to go to boot priority and you'll need to actually pick the usb or dvd drive that you put in as first then hard drive second at that point it will be caught and try to run it first before it goes to windows in the hard drive so you'll see in this case we won't get to the normal windows splash screen we will get to hopefully the Hiren's Boot CD splash page. Okay, so now we're booted up. Of course, the sizing is off a little because the resolution just changed, but you'll see here it says Hiren's Boot CD PE Windows 10. So just so you know, it's right there. Now that this is booted up, you'll see that it detected the network adapter. If you have to do any settings to get this machine on the network, you can, but logically, if this is all set up properly, you'll be able to then run Firefox, Chrome, and Explorer. If you wanna just use this machine to surf the web and kind of do whatever you need, that's one thing. And then the main part is in the start menu. You're gonna to wanna to go to all programs and then you're gonna to wanna to take a look. Here we have the boot tools that we we're talking about earlier. You have data recovery tools, which are really nice if you need to run a check disk on the actual C drive of the computer, you would do it in here. Uh, you can also then run any of these other tools and try to recover data. You have diagnostic tools, which are really nice. You'll be able to scan your hard disk, see if there's any problems. If you have a Western Digital Drive, you can run this one as well. And here are the imaging tools that we talked about earlier, partition tools if you need to make different disk drive letters. Then you can also erase the whole hard drive. Let's say if you're gonna give the computer to somebody else, you can use one of these tools for that. And the network then has other tools that you can utilize. And if we go down to security, you'll see that we have all these antivirus tools. You would, let's just say, run this ESET online scanner for example, and you didn't get started, I accept, and then I'll say no thanks, disable feedback, and then you can just literally start scanning the computer and see if you have a virus, it'll try to clean it. No guarantee that it's gonna work, but it's really nice way to scan the machine, especially if you have a virus that is very smart and keeps coming back and tries to keep loading your system. This is a good way to catch it and clean it up completely. 
and then back in here you can check if you have some keys for software that you need to get and somehow you don't have access to it and here you'll be able to also use the NT password edit which is pretty good we can actually hit open it's looking at the C drive already and it sees that we have an administrator and a user and you can actually either unlock the account and or change the password right here so pretty powerful tool here to use uh, and really nice anyone that uses this tool on your machine means that they could get to all your data and your files and I can show you here how if we click on this PC even just simply in Windows you can go to the C drive and then boom this is the actual full hard drive and like we said there was that user account but this is everything on that user account that was loaded up so this is pretty dangerous if you don't have BitLocker because someone can just grab your machine and or use this USB drive and then boom they can have access to your whole machine so another reason to use BitLocker and then back in here there's some other tools that you can run like the registry tools we were talking about or all of sys internals sys internals has a bunch of tools in here it looks like a hundred tools that you can use on your system which is very nice and and there's the latest soft Windows recovery as well. So these tools are really powerful. You can do all this with the machine being in a tough state and then hopefully you'd be able to actually utilize them. This is another way to get to these utilities right from the desktop. Uh, but hopefully you can repair your machine if needed. If nothing else, you can find out that, hey, I do have a bad hard drive. I can replace it and go from there. There's also a way that if you plugged in another USB or just this existing USB, you could just drag things. You can open up, let's say, this drive right here you can then go and open up this PC and then we go over to the C drive and you can see, let's just pretend that you want something you can then just drag and drop that's another way to just do a quick and dirty backup of the system you need data off the machine if the system does not want to boot hope this helped please like and subscribe and turn on notifications and share this with like, your family and friends and if this is way too much or way over your head don't forget to ask somebody else that has more experience to assist you Thanks.